Hey guys, so this is the Mazda Wankel rotary engine designed by Eric the Pool Boy to be 3D printed, uh, one third scale, which is just genius for what he's actually put into it and how everything folds apart to actually see what's going on inside of the engine. And to make it even better over the top is it works. So this is a little motor inside here turning all of this to actually show what's going on and to make it look even better, he's done it where you can see the rotor and when it lights up, here's when it is injecting and when it is being ignition. You can change it from one light to three lights by just taking out the rotor itself here. So this is completely transformable and, and you can move it around and you can take this little rotor and there's a little teeny switch that he's designed in as well. So I can now switch it over to be all three motors at once, all three lights. And what's even more amazing is when you switch it to all three lights, you can see when the fuel is being injected and then combustion. Um, so it's amazing that this all works at the same time together and it folds out and moves around um, and it changes to whatever you want to do. And I highly recommend anybody who wants to make this to build it. The rest of this video is probably going to be pretty boring unless you're building this. Um, it's going to be a bunch of tips and tricks that I learned along the way and things that I wish I knew when I was building this to um, incorporate into the design and the printing and more importantly the electronics into this. So this is what my opinion is on some of the electronics and how he's wired it up to go forward. But yeah, for, for this video, I hope that uh, you enjoy how this engine works. And for those of you carrying on in it, uh, good luck. Now, when it comes to wiring up the LEDs, I really liked his um, way that he put the tape sticky side up and you can put LED one, two, and three. The key part is do not add the ground wire on LED three. He puts another black ground wire here and then he will add it later to the motor. Don't do that. Um, that's a mistake. You don't need that ground wire. If you do, you're gonna run into problems. So it ends here, just like the schematic says. On this schematic, it finishes with the all terminals ending here, not an extra black ground running off of there. So don't do that when it comes to wiring up the LEDs. Now when it comes to the smart rotor, putting on the wires was kind of challenging. Make sure that you have good tension um, when you put those wires in and try to make them as best as possible, but mine's okay. When you come to the wiring stages of it, um, he puts the negative of the capacitors, um, firstly on the on the facing away, then he solders these together, and then he flips them around quickly in the video. So make sure that you put the negative on the capacitors on the inside, rather than facing away on the outside. Otherwise, I, you can do that. But make sure your diagram when you wire these up, um, you're putting the correct black and red 
wires onto this. Now, when it comes to the bridge diode here, he also has this reversed from the schematic here. Um, it looks different and this matters. This depends on where you're putting your positive and negative on your diode bridge. So what you need to do is twist it 90 degrees if you want to do it this way. What I'm doing is just copying what he does on the on the video. Um, it's hard to see on his video so I'm making this with uh, much better lighting so that you guys can see where I'm putting the diodes on the positive and negative on that diode bridge. I'll explain it. It's the silver is on here, 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 and here, so they're all pointing this way. And then I wire them up with these two here, these two here, um, your mylar capacitor, one of those is going to the inside of your wiring here. So that wires up, also goes to one of your diode bridges that you've wired together here. And then on the outside of this is going up and on the other side of your mylar capacitor and diode bridge, those wire up like this. So it looks like this. It's hard to tell in his video what they look like. So hopefully this will make a better picture before I solder all this stuff together. Um, it's just nice to see how these go and, and look. For someone like me, I'm a noob when it comes to electronics. So I just wanted to hopefully help clarify this for somebody else out there that is uh, looking into wiring these the way that he does on his video. Uh, this is the way that he does it in just a better picture to see which way the diode bridge is going, the mylar capacitor, and the inside and outside of that RX coil. Another nice thing to know is that the magnets that you glue inside of uh, the, part, the cap to go on top of your coil is, uh, those don't matter um, if it is positive or negative. So don't worry about those. All we're trying to do is attract it for when um, the rod goes inside of this. So it doesn't matter if these are positive or negative. It doesn't make a difference. Now before I solder in the LED assembly, I wanted to show you what my internals on this wiring look like. So what we have is our diode bridge going on here, our mylar capacitor is attached. So we have the first black wire coming in from those capacitors going on to the negative and then the red. So we're taking our red positive side on the diode bridge and we're having it go. I had it feed under here just to make it look a little nicer, a little neat. And then it feeds on top of that black wire and it goes on to this positive side of the capacitors. Underneath you can see there's the black wire and that is going underneath the red under here um, to this side of the diode bridge. And then we will attach in our LED strip. So we have the wires in and the LEDs locked into place. What I had to do for those was just take a little bit off of that top corner here, off of the top part on all of these. 
trying to kind of make like a little mini chamfer, if you will, um, just to have it be able to slide in those LEDs, this top part here was having a little difficulty slipping into the into the top square that is uh, cut out. But basically, other than that, we put in the first one here. The second one goes around over your big capacitors here, locks into place there. Then is the switch, and that little switch guy, after filing the top part of him, right up here after filing the top after filing the top part of the switch and cutting him then just a little dab of glue almost nothing i used the super glue gel kind from gorilla glue and just put a little bit that gel does a real nice job of not spreading out too much unlike the other regular Loctite glue. Uh, this is the glue that I'm using, this Loctite Super Glue 3. Um, that's good for getting into all these little spaces, like in for the capacitors and gets everywhere. Uh, but with this, we don't want a lot of liquid glue going inside of here. We want to be able to move this back and forth very easily. Then making sure that none of our wires are touching on the inside here, any other open wires. Uh, we go all the way over to our last LED, slips in here. Again, we do not add a ground wire onto this LED. The only ground is coming on to this LED. We have one ground wire, do not solder a ground wire from here to these capacitors. Okay, so with your wiring, what you need to also do, remember that I left out is attaching a red wire on the positive side of your capacitors and also a black wire on the negative side of your capacitors. This is gonna get pretty cramped, but you can do it and you can fit it in there and it'll have a little bit of room to work with to make sure that there's some gaps so that nothing's touching. I also put a little bit of heat sink on this so that this resistor, the 470 resistor, is not uh, going to short or touch anything. Then. I put the 10K resistor on the underside, fit that in through the P1, and also your blue wire from your magnetic strip into the P1. Then the blue from the LED into the P4. Then the grounds. The LED ground is going to fit into your ground up here as well as your ground from your capacitors goes up in there plus that resistor, that 10K resistor. Um, it's a tight squeeze getting that resistor from P1 to the ground, but I fit the capacitor one up first, shoved the resistor one up there, then on the top, wrapped around the ground from the LEDs and soldered all three of those together. It's quite a little piece, but it can, it can work then also you have your five volts which is going to be going from your magnetic and your leds into the five volts after doing the ground you're pretty good um for everything else you're gonna you're gonna be a pro on everything then it's uploading all the code 
into the Arduino. Running through those, those give me some troubles. I had to um, reboot it a couple times because it didn't seem to like it uh, when I first loaded it. And then I loaded it and then making sure that you have the drivers for it. Um, so it may be a little bit out of date, but they'll work. And after you load it up, make sure that you compile it first on the screen, upload, then it'll give you 60 seconds, then plug this in. Um, I was also worried when I, um, they say that these should not be wired up to it because the computer uses them uh, to download drivers onto this. But I wired everything up and then plugged the code into it. And, and as you can see, on an external source, not a computer, that this works. So that's fine. Um, you don't need to, I didn't need to um, make sure that it compiled like that. So then I give it a little bit, and then if you run a magnet through it, it will light up. And that will run through your sequence of your blues and then your orange and red. So it'll keep that sequence going. If you have it go through, then you can also test it and see if one of your lights work, which would just be this one over here. So when that one's going, it's just going to run through its cycles. If you run another magnet through it, it's going to run it through that, through that color. And that's it. So I just wanted to point it out again, uh, some things that I did. Uh, these screws that uh, are only the five millimeter ones, I put a little bit of super glue on those because they were a little loose. Same with the ones inside, in between in here, those little screws um, that go on the inside here. Um, they're just a little bit loose that were rattling around. Also, be sure that your wires aren't uh, you don't sand those out um, there so that uh, they're still not touching. You want to make sure that those aren't touching. Now when it comes to the motor, this plus, which you think would go to this part, doesn't. It actually goes to this one. Um, so that's why I put the red on this part here. This is my positive. Otherwise your motor is going to go in reverse. I also wanted to show you an up-close diagram of the wiring here, so that positive on the motor is actually for the further one away, like mentioned before, that wires in to here, and you also have all of your wires coming out, going into this board and your little Arduino here, so for all that to scale, um, that's all correct. I didn't move those pins up, instead I just put them across and got some little soldering um, in there for those. And also the Mylar cap here is connected to our wires. I sanded just the end part here so that you can, um, so that they don't touch anywhere else. It's just those, just those two imports. So after that, we have to just put everything together. Yeah. 